Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian here. Today what I want to show you is an idea I had on how we could build a more efficient pot or pan design than the one we use today. Typically what we see for a pot or a pan is just one pressed out layer of metal, it's got a flat bottom, and then we vary the sidewall depth between either a frying pan style sidewalls or a nice deep saucepan style like the one you see here. So typically what happens here in a normal pan is whether we're using a gas cooking range or an electric range, the heat hits against the bottom of the pan, comes out and kind of interacts with the side of our pan and then dissipates out and away. And we trap some of that heat with a lid that gets through the bottom of the pan and into our food medium. We can trap that in with a lid, it does make it more efficient. But the airflow that's happening in our house, if you walk around the pan, all of that, is kind of pulling the heat away from the sides of the pan pretty quickly that comes off the bottom, making it very inefficient once that heat leaves the flat surface of the bottom of the pan from the underside from whatever heat source that we're using. So what I've come up with here is a way that we could trap that heat for much, much longer around our food until actually it would leave the very center of the top of our pan, like this design that you see here. The way this design works is this, is that typically, like I showed you, the heat's gonna come out and go right off from the bottom of the pan, which is this part here, out into the open air. What I've done to kind of trap more of that heat for longer, to give us more interaction time with that heat, making it more efficient, is I've created a double wall. So we have an interior pot, and then I've created an exterior wall with an air gap between them that allows the heat coming from our burner, whether it's a gas range or an electric range, to come off the bottom of the pan and now go up through this air gap. Now, if I get this close enough, you'll see up in there, there's some holes drilled. I'll turn it around and let you see those from the other side. What those holes do is allows all the heat coming up these side walls here from our heat source to go right here. Right out of those holes, right there in the top, and into our lid. And our lid's basically the same idea. We've got, instead of just one layer of metal like you typically would have sitting over the top of your pot, we now have a double walled effect with some holes here that allow the heat coming up from our sidewall out of these holes up into the gap between the two layers here of our lid. Now we can regulate the flow rate of that with this simple chimney design in the very center of it all. So if I have the burner on really, really low and I want to trap all that heat, that's now going up around my sidewalls into my lid and out the center here. I can trap it, slow it down, get the best effect out of it as I can when it's on low. Now if I got the burner on high, I want to increase the flow rate of that heat around all of my food, kind of like a reactor. I can open up the chimney and let that flow kind of happen at a really quick rate. It'll draw in air from the outside mixed with that heat as well and help cook our food a lot more efficiently and a lot faster. And we're going to go ahead and push that to the side now. What I've been able to do here is design more of a universal way to get the same effect that we got out of that pot. All right, so real quickly here, I'm gonna open this back up and you can see how the lid works there as I open it up. You can see how it extends out to the height of the pan that's inside of there. If I grab this just right, hold this up here, you can see the little gap, if I can get the light area there, you can see the gap coming around the edge of the pan. And if you got the pan kind of centered inside of that gap should be all the way around it. If I get my fingers out of there, and that way the heat coming up from the bottom of the burner can go all the way around the pan there into that gap between the two layers of our lid and then out the hole there in the center again just like our other design. Uh, the little sleeve here that I showed you, let me try to pull this all out of here. The little sleeve just makes sure that we have a nice sealed area. Otherwise we're going to have these two openings either above and below the handle here if the handle's at the top or the bottom. If it's in the middle like this one here you're going to have a hole at the top and the bottom. And then the heat coming up off the bottom there from your burner is going to come out of this hole. You're not going to get the efficiency. So by adding just a simple sleeve here, and it's reversible for different pan heights, you can really increase the efficiency of that design. And it's pretty easy to just set that sleeve in there. And now you'll notice it gives us a really nice seal there on the side. And then also adjustable for each one of the pan sizes. So once again, we could pull that out. I could change over to this much smaller saucepan here by flipping it upside down. We can set that down inside of there. And then, once again, we can just set our lid on there. We now have, get that kind of down in there, we now have a nice sealed pan oven for our smaller saucepan there. Here I have a new design specifically engineered for gas burners. This won't work quite as well for an electric range like the design we had here on this one, which is just the flat bottom pan. This would be more universal for both gas and electric, whereas the bottom of this one, which is 
coil, if I can get that at the right angle, you'll notice there's a spiraling coil there. It's when the flame is produced inside the interior part of the spiral, instead of just going right against the bottom of the pan and out, it now has to travel in this gap all the way around and then finally all the way to the outside edge. And instead of just going out to the outside, our pan oven design is going to trap that. Now bring it up the sidewall here between the two layers and heat our pan back over the top of all that food, heating even over the top of it, giving a much more efficient use of the heat generated from the flames down here. So instead of being a travel path of, let's say, just a few inches from our flames going right down the bottom of the pan and off, we now have a travel path of like 56 inches. So that flame and the heat from that flame now has to sit against the bottom of the pan for 56 inches worth of travel time or travel length against the bottom of that pan distributing that heat much more effectively into the pan itself before escaping out of the bottom of the pan and then up through our pan oven sides. This right here should be the most efficient way that we could use the gas ranges that we have out there and the energy produced from them. This would also work as a camping stove unit here for a pan oven for camping because uh, also the flames for any kind of uh, campfire is going to do the very same thing. It's going to travel through our thermal coil here, giving much more energy to the food that we're cooking due to the travel time that it's going to have against the bottom of the pan. I've got a pan ready to go. First of all, we're gonna do a base test where I'm gonna fill 64 ounces of water inside the pan, put a lid on it, it's a glass lid. We're gonna put it on the same burner here and heat that up and wait for it to boil. Once I see the first bubbles really start to come up off the bottom of the pan to indicate boiling, I'm gonna stop the stopwatch and take a time from that. I'll go over to the sink, I'm gonna recool the pan back down in my tap water so that way it's not heated up already. We'll get that back down to a base temperature. We'll refill that pan with the exact same temperature water from the same jug that we start our base test with. That way both of our starting temperatures of the water are gonna be the same. We'll then put the pan inside the pan oven, turn that on, and we're gonna take a time measurement of that on the stopwatch to see just how much faster the pan oven can boil the same 64 ounces of water. So I've got all the water in it. One of the things that's changed here is I said 64 ounces of water because I was kind of guessing I haven't pre-measured any of this. It turns out I was only able to get about 48 ounces of water in there without going too high on the pan. So we're going to actually do this test with 48 ounces of water instead of the 64 that I had said previously. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get this thing ready to go. First of all, we're going to get the stove lit and a lid on there and start the clock and we are ready to go. Okay, so we're at six minutes, 42 seconds, and it's just now starting to boil. You can see the state of the boil. Just barely, I just saw the beginnings of it, and it's gonna start getting faster from right there. So that was the state of the boil. A pan with 48 ounces of water with just a lid on it was able to achieve at six minutes, 48 seconds. I've recooled the pan down in the tap water so it starts out nice and cool again. Let's go ahead and start filling that back up and get 48 ounces of water in there. Then I'll set the pan inside the pan oven and we'll turn the stove back on. Pan oven's ready. Get the lid on there. There it is. So our base test took six minutes and 48 seconds. I highly doubt we'll need anywhere near that time with the pan oven. So what I'm thinking here is we're gonna take a peek inside of it at about five minutes just to see what state of boil it's at, if it's boiling. And then again, I'm gonna look at six minutes. So we're gonna give it about two minutes before the base test and then one minute before the base test just to see if it's going. I'm hoping that by the one minute mark that we're already well past the boil that we are at with the base test. So I've moved the camera a little closer. We're coming up on five minutes, 4.52, 53. I wanna go ahead and test this out right at the five minutes because I'm already hearing activity in there. All right, right at the five minutes. Oh, look at that. Look at that, we're already boiling. And that's a much more vigorous boil than what we had at 6 minutes 48 seconds 
with a pan with just a standard lid on it. I'm kind of curious on when we actually started boiling. It sounded like it was around 4 minutes and 38 seconds, 39 seconds, somewhere in there. I could hear activity. Quite a nice gain in efficiency compared to just our standard pan with the lid.